Welcome, we'll start with one of the very important class for GS today and that talks about the Vasanar arrangement. Before we start the idea about Vasanar arrangement, let's have a brief outlook about what are weapons of mass destruction, what have been the major treaties and why India is not part of it. So with, let's first start with the weapons of mass destruction. If we talk about the weapons of mass destruction, those are the weapons that can lead uh, kind of uh, that can destruct or damage the humanity at a greater extent. So these could be biological in nature, chemical in nature, nuclear in nature or what we say radiological in nature. Now if we talk about the proliferation of these weapons, this can be either through chemical means or could, could be nuclear or by means of missiles. Now there are two major treaties that we would discuss today and then we'll come on to the four major arrangements or the groups that we would discuss. So the two major treaties that we would talk about, the first is the NPT, that's the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and the other is CTBT, that's the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Now both of these treaties work towards basically disarmament. So the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty talks about that each and every nation should be free from nuclear uh, weapons and there should be no nuclear weapon that should be part of it. So it was basically signed in 1996. However, some of the countries were not party to it and three of the nations did nuclear test even after the CTBT was released. Of these three countries, those were India in 1998, you had the nuclear test, then Pakistan again in 98 and then Korea in 2006 and 2008. So both, so all these three nations were basically not parting to CTBT. The next is the non-proliferation treaty. Now this treaty talks about basically the extent or the sharing of the nuclear disarmament policy. So again, India is not a member of the non-proliferation treaty. The basic reason being there are five nations which are basically the permanent nations of UN Security Council and also the nuclear weapon nations. So what India's stand is either these nations should become or should be denuclearized or India should be given a status of as these five nations are given under NTP. So that's the India's stand. Now why India has this kind of stand? There are two reasons for it. The first reason is India is bordered by Pakistan and China and both of these are having nuclear weapons. The next is India is not self-reliant in terms of energy. So India has been importing energy from other nations. So nuclear energy could be a kind of alternate to the uh, problem of import of energy in India. So those are some of the primary reasons why India is not parting to N NTP NPT. Now some of the terminologies that we would be discussing. Doomsday clock is a clock that represents uh, the man-made chances of global disaster and that primarily includes the threat due to nuclear war. The next is international campaign to abolish the nuclear weapons. Now this is a society working to promote uh, the adherence to the NTP, NPT sorry, and uh, this organization won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2017. So it's really important for this year. The next is nuclear latency or nuclear threshold state. Now these are the nations which have the potential to develop nuclear power but have still not done so. So it's also known as Japan option considering the fact that Japan has a technology and has a kind of technical power. It can develop nuclear, uh, nuclear energy or nuclear weapons whenever required but has not done so far. The next is nuclear disarmament. So it, the idea is to reduce or remove the use of nuclear weapons. Now there are various organizations which are part of it. Some of the names are given here. So these will be available in the handout section. Nuclear terrorism talks about the use of nuclear technology by a terrorist group or a terrorist organization. And if it is misused, we call it as an act of nuclear terrorism. So far, this has not been happened. Now, next two terms are very, very important. The first is nuclear weapons free zone and the other is nuclear free zone. So nuclear free zone is an area which has been banned from nuclear power, nuclear weapons 
and nuclear waste however nuclear weapons free zone is an agreement that has been released by united nations and it's basically a treaty that bans the use and development of nuclear weapons in a given area now two more important terms very very important no first use policy no first use policy says that the country will not use the nuclear weapons at first now this has been used for nuclear weapons now previously it was mainly for the biological and the chemical weapons china had this policy the nfu that was signed in 1964 however india signed this policy in 2003 and india did it only for the nuclear weapon so that's again very very important india talked about the no first use policy only for nuclear weapons the next was second strike capability second strike capability is the country's ability, uh, ability to strike back once you have a nuclear attack that is being done now npt the non proliferation treaty we have already talked about that prevents the spread of the nuclear um, uh, nuclear basically power and the nuclear weapons or technology to other nations so it was opened for signature in 68 it came into force in 70 and so far it has 191 members with five nuclear uh, weapon states that we already talked about and these five states are also the members of un security council so you have china france russia uk and usa which have basically a kind of undue stand now india's position we have already discussed here so that's the map that talks about the states which have the npt designated uh, nuclear weapon states so five of those which are marked in blue then three states india pakistan and israel which are not part of npt but have nuclear weapons then you have other states which are presumed to have nuclear weapons which is israel here then you have nato members which are the nuclear weapon sharing members which include belgium germany then you have italy turkey and netherlands however there are some states which are marked in green which previously had the nuclear capability and does not have now which are belarus kazakhstan south africa and ukraine so those are important so this map is really important now ctbt we have already talked about now in ctbt we come across two terms one is signing the treaty and one is ratification of the treaty this term has been often on used even in the environment conventions and more uh, more conventions and more treaties now let's understand what is the difference between signing a treaty and ratifying a treaty so when i say you are signing a treaty that means the country is accepting that treaty and when the country is accepting it that treaty country will not take any action which is against the rules or the policies of that treaty so nearly how many nations you have seen here so you have 182 nations that have signed the treaty so far and the most recent one is the trinidad and the tobago however 154 nations have ratified the treaty of which the latest one is ghana now what is ratification ratifying a treaty means that it has passed on the treaty to its official body for a sanction and once you have the sanction it could be passed so basically it's in the hand of the government of that nation for a legal binding and therefore we call it as a ratification so the difference between signing a treaty and ratifying a treaty is very very important commonly used so you must know the basic difference between the two now we have already talked about the countries which have carried out the nuclear explosion after the ctbt now how do the organization verify the, that the nations which are under ctbt or which have signed ctbt are following the rules so there are three ways first is installation of monitoring stations the next is analysis of data and the on site inspection so just go there and inspect the most common of these is the monitoring stations there are nearly 337 monitoring stations that are there which are based on four parameters the first is seismic parameters which detect the shock waves the next is hydroacoustics which detect the acoustic waves infrasound which detect the low frequency waves and radionuclide which detects the radionuclides and the noble gases so these four are very very important those are uh, the part of the monitoring stations which are doing the work of verifying Uh, whether the country is actually not using the nuclear resources or not now the next is vasanar arrangement 
Now before we start with Vasanar arrangement, let's have a brief outlook about the four major organizations. So those are Vasanar arrangements, uh, NSG, the nuclear supplier groups, the missile, technolo missile control technology regime and you have the Australian group. Now India is not a member of the nuclear supplier group and the Australian group. India was a member of missile technology control regime and recently India became a member of the Vasanar arrangement. However, here comes the politics. Now what basically is the scenario is that India is a member of Vasanar arrangement. However, China is not a member of Vasanar arrangement. On the other hand, under NSG, the nuclear supply group, China is a member, but India is not a member. So China is basically delaying the India's entry into the nuclear supplier group. As a result, what India can do being now a member of Vasanar arrangement is India can provide steps to delay the membership of China into the Vasanar arrangement. So that's the kind of political game that has been going on. However, all of these four groups are basically arms control groups and the idea is to restrict the technology within that group and that technology could be used for the development within that group. So let's talk about these one by one. Now definitely once India has a membership to Vasanar arrangement, India aims to get membership into Australian group, that's a kind of middle path, but the ultimate idea of India is to enter the nuclear suppliers group. Now why India wants to enter all these groups? The idea is India would have a foothold of the major technological developments which are mainly for the dual use when we talk about the Vasanar arrangement. So dual goods uh, and dual technology means it's, it's both for the civilian as well as the military purpose. So you have more transparency, more responsibility and a kind of dual use of goods and technology that could be seen. Now this dual use of goods and technology is beneficial for both civilian and military purpose. Since India is being bordered by the nations which have nuclear weapons, India need to have a good hold on the nuclear technologies. So that's the basic idea why India is looking forward to enter all these groups. The next is, we'll talk about these one by one now. So we'll focus or start from nuclear suppliers group. The nuclear supplier group prevents or controls the export of the nuclear supplies or the nuclear weapons to only the people who are within that group. Now this group was founded in 1974 after the India's first nuclear test that was conducted and the first meeting was held in 75. However, the signatories have been limiting the use and the following nations are part of the nuclear suppliers group. There are some nations which are supporting India's stand to join the nuclear supplier groups and here is India and those are the nations you have America, you have Australia that is supporting India's entry into the nuclear supplier group. However, there are nations like China which is restricting or holding down India's entry into the nuclear supplier group. So that's again very very important, the nations which are supporting and which are not supporting. The next is missile technology control regime. So following are the nations which have the missile technology control regime which are member of it and India is definitely a member of it. So you have 35 nations who are working for it and it prevents the proliferation of the missile technology with a payload of more than 500 kilograms to an area of more than 300 kilometers. So that's the basic idea. It was established in 87 and initially G7 countries were part of it. India became a member as early in 2015 and now very recent within two years India has become a part of Vasanar arrangement as well. Coming on to the Australia group, this was established in 1985. The idea was to identify the exports only to the regions which are part of the Australian group and they would be supplying the chemical and the biological weapons within the, uh, the countries that are member of this group. Now when any technology is supplied only to the nations which are part of that group what ultimately happens is 
the developed nations or the countries which are part of these groups become more powerful as compared to the other nations and therefore they can in certain cases get undue advantage or extract undue advantage for the same. So that was the Australian group. Initially it had 15 members and now it has 42 members. Uh, Obama who was the Prime Minister, uh, the President sorry, of Amer America was following India's stand and was supporting India's entry into NSG and the Australian group. So that has been again very very important. Coming on to the Vasanar arrangement. Now Vasanar, why does this name came into being? Vasanar is a place near Hague in Netherlands and at this place it was initially decided for multilateral export control for the various nuclear weapons and it should be restricted to the countries that are part of it. So it propagated the two ideas of dual use technology, dual use goods and bringing in more transparency and responsibility for the member nations. So what does the control list of Vasanar arrangement includes. So there are nine categories under which it is divided and these nine categories basically focus on both the civilian good and the, the civilian welfare and the military welfare. So you have the special material which under the first category you have material processing, electronics, computers, telecommunication, information security, sensors, navigation, avionics, marine and aerospace, aerospace and propulsion. Now all these nine categories are very very important specifically for your objective questions. So make sure you know these categories and these can be part of your final paper. Now what are the critics? Now critics as we said for any of these four nuclear groups that we have discussed not only was in our arrangement is the developed nations or the ne member nations who are part of these groups can have a kind of undue advantage over the developing or the less developed nations. They can make uh, less developed nations a uh, part of uh, their changes so they can ask them to manipulate based on their requirements. So that's one of the major criticism. The next criticism is the arrangement restricts the western companies to basically uh, supply or the crucial uh, technologies to the emerging market. So whatever markets are coming up, you are restricting the supply to those markets and therefore we can say it's a kind of one way or one sided uh, group that has been formed which is doing the welfare of the member nations of that group. So those are the major things that we have discussed in this class. Now coming on to some of the highlights during this week. So you have the uh, Hush 2018 agreement that was signed between India and Saudi Arabia. Then Indian Railways has done two major developments. First is uh, the Matunga Railway Station came under the Limka Book of Records for all women staff. So definitely if you have a question on women empowerment, you can write down this, write this down as a case study. Then you have the Smart Freight Operation Optimization and Real Time Information Application that was released by Indian Railways. Again, new online vendor registration system was started by Indian Railways and you had 108 year old monorail that is now operational at the National Rail Museum in Delhi. So those were some of the major highlights. In the next class, we will be touching another very important topic specifically for those from geography optional that's the monsoon mission. So definitely uh, refer that uh, topic. It's very, very important for your upcoming examinations. And in general, this topic is also important for the GS and disaster management section. So definitely refer that. If you have any doubts, leave those as comment below the video will be more than happy to resolve it. Hindi medium students can refer to another channel that's exam race Hindi for all the lectures in Hindi there. If uh, it, We would be happy to have more subscribers there in Hindi as well. Have a good day ahead.